could have gone to the 50s or the 60s or talked Raymond Berry, but I don't, I don't want the audience looking for that. I'm mm -hmm. going to talk about guys who are peer, peers of your generation. Mm -hmm. I think Anquan Bolden Ooh. is the most underrated wide receiver of your generation. What he did over the course of his career with so many different teams personified toughness, big game ability, and did it all in an understated fashion where it wasn't always going to be a, a drama-filled thing. He wasn't getting the ball. Sometimes he was the number two on an offense. Sometimes he was the number three in an offense. But when it mattered most, Anquan Bolden was there. We're showing him catching passes from Jeff Blake here. He also caught passes as a lion, like as recent as like four years ago. Long career. And if you take a look at the numbers, if you're looking strictly at wide receivers, no tight ends here. That's Matt Leinart throwing him a pass, by the way, there. Um, can we see this full screen here? I'd love to show you. Where does he stand all time? Look at these names. Rice, Fitzgerald, who was his teammate. Get rid of Gonzalez and Witten, because we wanted just the wide receivers here. So it's Rice, Fitzgerald, Harrison, Carter, Brown, Owens, then Anquan. Mm. As far as receiving yards, this is this numbers are all wrong. We're going to scrap this. We're going to re I don't even know what we're looking at here. It's supposed to be receptions, and that's what it is. Um, but that would be what it is. Not receiving yards. His receptions, as far as compiling, adding, stacking numbers. Anquan Bolden never mentioned in the same voice as Jerry Rice or Marvin Harrison, but gosh, I don't know, put up a Hall of Fame career if you ask me. I hated playing against Anquan because he was a bully. Like He went out there on the <laughs> field, he wanted to push you around, wanted to talk trash. He was a big, strong receiver, didn't mind blocking, doing the dirty work, going across the middle. So 100% Anquan Bolden. I'm going a little bit before my generation, and I remember getting a chance to hear Shannon Sharp in his Hall of Fame speech, and he dubbed himself as the only person in the Hall Hall of Fame who wasn't the best football player in his family because Sterling Sharp, his brother, was a wide receiver for the Green Bay Packers and got a chance to only play seven years a neck injury. But this dude was incredible. And I remember watching that speech. I was like, damn, I didn't know, I didn't know he had a brother. And I went back and watched highlights and started reading about Sterling Sharp and the numbers he had, breaking a single season in receptions with 108 yards, then following up with 112 yards the very next year, catching passes from Brett Favre, this guy was unbelievable. In his seven years, throughout that span, he was second in receptions and second in yards. The only receiver who was in front of him, Peter? Jerry Rice. Jerry Rice. My goodness, he was unbelievable for those seven years. I'm going to go with somebody a little different. Okay. I'm going to go with Andre Johnson. Great. Talk about it. The reason I'm going to go with Andre Johnson is because uh, I think he's underrated is because of the team he was on. Yep. I mean, Houston had a couple good seasons, but I, I, just, I just, can I read a couple names? Just, uh, yeah. just give me a second. <laughs> David Carr, Tony Banks, Dave Ragone, Matt Schaub, Sage Rosenfels, TJ Yates, Case Keenan, Ryan Fitzpatrick, and Ryan Mallett. Those were Andre Johnson's quarterbacks. You know what he did in that time frame? What'd he do? He has the most 100 reception, 1,400 yard seasons in NFL history. Over 14,000 yards. He led the league in receiving yards twice. He led the league in receptions twice over that span. And this is who's throwing to him. <laughs> like, if that's not underrated with doing that, with who's throwing to you in that span, I think Andre Johnson is definitely underrated in NFL history. Is it crazy that this guy's not in the Hall of Fame? He's had two rounds to go about yes. it. It has not been it's voted. It's insane. I'm, a, I'm with you. He'll I thought it was Larry round. Fitz and him. Yeah. And he's now going to have to wait a third year yeah. to get in. I think it's absurd. The whole time Gerald was talking, I was listening, but I'm looking at the screen hoping that I'm not on any of the highlights. Right? <laughs> I, I had to play against it twice yeah. a year, so I know exactly yeah. what you're talking about. But that's underrated. About. To not be in the Hall of Fame yet. Yeah, oh, absolutely. No, he should be in. And because also, when you were saying that, and we were coming up with this list, when, and you had said Andre Johnson, and I saw it on the list, and I'm like, but I don't think of him as underrated in the sense of, I remember I was back covering the Titans when he was in his prime, and I mean, this guy was just demolishing everybody all the time. So mm -hmm. I didn't think of, I had, for, for my guy that was underrated, and this sort of pairs with what you said about the team you were playing on, Jimmy Smith with the Jaguars, because mm -hmm. I think, like I, again, I just don't think they get a lot of loves down there yep. um, oftentimes, and they had that window, the Mark Brunel window, but I mean, I mean, he's their career leader in uh, literally everything mm -hmm. down there. He is Mr. Jaguar, you know, the stuff that he did down in there. So so Jimmy Smith was was my guy because I was, again, trying to think of, and even Anquan Bolden, I think, well, that's a huge name. And, like, I don't know. I, just, I don't even think that Jimmy, and he doesn't have the, the, maybe some of the same numbers, but the consistency and the manner in which he did that down in Jacksonville for, it felt like yeah. a really long time. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know that he's gotten his due. So we're giving everyone love this morning on Good Morning Football. Coming